President Paul Kagame has met with Rwanda's top security brass amid growing security tensions with neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo. For over two years, both Rwanda and DRC have maintained heavily armed forces along the common border, alarming the region. Rwanda's presidency on Wednesday night said Kagame, who is the commander-in-chief of the Rwanda Defense Force, RDF, chaired a high command council attended by active and retired RDF senior officers from the Rwanda National Police, RNP, the National Intelligence and Security Services, NISS, Rwanda Investigation Bureau, RIB, and Rwanda Collectional Service, RCS. No further details were given by the presidency. However, Moses Asinguza, a regional security analyst, says the meeting was possibly aimed at jointly assessing the internal and external security threats faced by Rwanda. The president possibly wanted to engage and listen to retired and serving commanders on the evolving security situation in the country and region, especially DRC, said Asinguza. Rwandan security services recently arrested the former Inspector General of Police, Emmanuel Gasana, over alleged corrupt practices. President Paul Kagame also reshuffled his top army commanders and security chiefs. The High Command Council meeting also comes against the backdrop of increasing fighting between Congolese forces and M23 rebels in eastern DRC. Rwanda accuses Kinshasa of arming and encouraging the Rwandan genocide militia group FDRL to attack Rwandan territory. On the other hand, DRC accuses Rwanda of backing the M23 rebels to destabilize and exploit the mineral-rich region. Both countries deny the counter-accusations. The war in Congo has strained the two neighbors' bilateral relations to an extent that DRC President Felix Tshisekedi Tshirimbo said he was considering building a wall along the 250-kilometer common border. It is understood Congo recently bought modern combat drones trained and armed over 40,000 troops in preparation for war with Rwanda. The United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken recently called Kagame and Tshisekedi with the view of de-escalating the tensions between the two neighbors over the M23 rebellion. During the calls, Blinken advocated for a diplomatic solution to the tensions between the two countries and urged each side take measures to de-escalate the situation, including removing troops from the border. Blinken also expressed alarm at the volatile situation and worsening humanitarian crisis along the border between Rwanda and the DRC. UNHCR protection monitors have reported that over 90,000 people across the Ruchuru and Masisi territories were forced to free their homes during the first week of October. Displaced families urgently need food, clean water and shelter, but humanitarian access to affected populations is severely restricted due to ongoing conflicts. South Kivu province, which sits on the periphery of the primary conflict, has become home of 260,000 internally displaced people. UNHCR Protection Monitoring has revealed a dramatic deterioration of the protection environment in the province with 8,243 human rights violations reported in September alone, including killings, routings, and rape. Disease outbreaks, particularly chorella and measles, continue to ravage IDP sites in North Kivu, exacerbated by overcrowding and lack of drinking water. Out of, out of one million people ardently requiring shelters in the eastern provinces, only 115,000 have received from since June. From them, since June, 
Meanwhile, children in dozens of schools in North Kivu remain out of school as their classrooms are used to shelter displaced families. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Has given its support to send 1,000 police officers to Haiti to help combat gang violence despite a court order temporarily putting the deployment on hold. The MPs who approved the motion cited Kenya's responsibility to assist other countries in need. For more insight, VOA's Paul Indiho spoke with Edgar Gitua an international relations security and diplomatic expert at the U.S. International University in Nairobi. Prime Minister Ariel uh, sent out a plea for help some time back, and he's been saying we cannot govern Haiti because of this gang violence and these gangs that have taken over very important infrastructure. And Kenya answered the call, and using uh, through the Security Council, it approved. For the first time, I am saying Kenya needs to send the right soldiers the ones who qualify and who who have tested battle, who are combat ready, who can handle this. If we go choosing through corruption a ragtag team, we are going to come back in body bags. Paul, Kenya will be embarrassed. This is our chance to shine on the global stage to go and show that we can handle this. The Haitians are, are okay with uh, foreign troops coming in, but the gangs have made it clear. They have said under no circumstances should any foreign troops come into their country. There is this gang leader called Barbecue. That's, that's his name, yeah. Barbecue has been on record saying we will deal with any external force in the only way we know how. Remember, he's been a chief of police. So within his ranks, I am sure he has very well trained people, militia. But looking at the politics back home, uh, yes. Is this something that can be settled? Because right now, as we speak, uh, there is a whole court uh, order uh, stopping yeah. any further uh, uh, engagement on this uh, uh, issue. The court issue for me, I am looking at it positively as an opportunity for the government through its attorney general and its lawyers to argue its case and to put forward a case to the Kenyan public and to the whole world of how of its of its preparedness and how it arrived at this decision, and what informed uh, its confidence levels that it was going to send soldiers to go. If Kenya can start preparing on that, regardless of what whichever direction the court rules, I have a feeling that will go in a long way in making the Kenyan people more comfortable with the idea of sending our boys and girls across. Because like you rightly said, Paul, if we walk into this blindly, and if we think of going to use our African uh, uh, brutal tactics. That's a good point. Uh, Kenyan police is yeah. notorious for brutalizing its own people on the streets. Are they going yeah. to do the same thing in Haiti? Now that Kenya has made a public commitment, our president has gone out on a limb and committed himself and said and agreed we are going to send our forces. It is too late to backtrack right now. What we now need to do as Kenya is make sure we send the right police force with the right training, with the right mindset, they need to be told this is not business as usual. We are carrying Africa on our shoulders. It's not just Kenya's problem. This is Africa and East Africa's problem. So we are, let, let us be brand ambassadors for Africa. Let Kenya go and do the right thing. And then anywhere else, any other part outside Africa, if there is a problem, they can be like, let's, let's get those African soldiers. They can make a difference for us. So it's a big opportunity for Kenya. It's a it's a make-or-break moment for Kenya and Africa also. That was Dr. Edgar 